Okay, we are almost ready to integrate Redux into our React application. And the last thing we got to do is figure out how to handle our async actions. And Redux actually makes that really easy. Because with Redux tied into React, React is only ever a representation, a view representation of the state of the store. So as the store changes, the view changes, but the view never changes unless the store changes. That's kind of the biggest fundamental difference in Redux is React is simply a view layer only. You move absolutely all of the representation out of the components and into the store. So basically, you never ever ever use state again. You're always going to use props that come from the store. And async is really where you kind of start to see how that makes sense, how it plays out. And it's a little bit different mentally at first, but then once you get it, it's really, really simple. So first of all, let's get rid of this uh, store subscribe and let's import a logger. I've installed Redux, I've installed Redux logger. And then their way of doing it is you actually have to do logger and then actually run that as a function. So now we should start seeing these beautiful logs. Excellent. So we get our previous state, the action that was fired and the next state. Redux logger is very nice. Um, and then we want to go ahead and instead of dispatching an object that contains a type and maybe a payload, we actually want to dispatch a function with that receives one argument and that argument will be the dispatcher. Uh, we'll actually call it dispatch. It'll be the dispatch function. And then inside of this function, we can actually call dispatch. And we can actually dispatch an event here. We can do something async. And then we can dispatch something else. So that'll basically be how we handle asynchronous actions. As far as Redux and React is concerned, it's just a handful of multiple synchronous actions. And so basically there's a thunk middleware that allows us to do this. There we go, so we're just gonna import Redux thunk, add that as middleware, and we're good to go. So then we can dispatch stuff. Of course, these are all gonna be empty objects because they don't have types. You can see I got a nice little error message there. So we'll just go type of foo for now and then type of var. And there you go. So now multiple actions are happening with one singular action. And that's how we're gonna handle async actions. So let's go and import a XHR request, which Axios is kind of my favorite one these days. No need to bring in jQuery here if you're working on the clients. Uh, React is awesome and that you'd never need jQuery again. So then we can actually dispatch. Uh, let's go ahead and dispatch fetch users. Let's say we're doing a fetch users action. We'll dispatch a fetch user start right away with absolutely no payload. That way the UI can show a loading bar or something like that, or it can reference that you've actually started fetching those users. And we're gonna go ahead and get something. I'm gonna use that free RESTful API that I put up a while back, rest.learncode.academy. And I already posted a couple users to that. Debbie Stern users. This is actually a really fun way to just mock out data instantly. You can start posting to any username uh, and start getting anything. It'll basically create a collection on demand. So if you do a post to, I don't know, John Bob slash users, then it's going to create your users collection right away and post whatever object you're doing in there. The data just resets nightly. You can see more on rest.learncode academy, but it's awesome for rapid prototyping. Uh, so we're just going to get that then that'll give us a response. And we're just going to run that and we'll dispatch something else. Let's bring this up here. So when our response is received, we're gonna go ahead and dispatch type fetch users received. Actually, this is probably called receive users. And then the payload will be response.data is the format that Axios uses for that. And then if there's an error, we can also catch that. Fetch users error. And the payload will just be the error object. So there we go, we have potentially three actions that could go here. We're always gonna fire fetch users start, 
when that data is received, let's say half a second, quarter second later, then we're gonna fire off a receive users with the payload of that data. And if there's an error, we're gonna dispatch fetch users error. So then all we have to do is go up to our reducer and add those different states. So I can switch based off of, make that a little cleaner. If our case is fetch user start, we're going to run that block. If our case is fetch users error, we're going to run that block. Oops. And if our case is receive users, then we're going to run that block. Add my brakes. And we should be good to go. So there we go. We have a fetch user start. You can see a little bit later, we've got our receive users. So now all we have to do is actually have these do something. So right now my default state is blank. It's an empty object. Let's go ahead and add an actual initial state here. And let's say fetching is going to be false. These are going to be some nice pieces of data that our UI can use. Fetching false. So if fetching switches to true, then the UI can automatically, when it re-renders, show a loader. Um, and then fetched false. We haven't fetched anything yet. So we will not show, say, the users array with an empty amount of users in it. Um, and let's go users is empty right now. And then error is null. No error. So we don't have to worry about showing that at all. So that's our default state. So then our state can actually use this. So now our initial state will actually have that information in it. You can see, there we go, boom, boom, boom. Initial state's populated. So if the users start, then we're just gonna return, we're gonna return state, and we're gonna change fetching to true. And then if there's an error, we're gonna return the exact state. Fetching is false, we're done fetching. And then we're going to add the action payload in as the error. So the exact same state. We don't care about any of the rest of the state, but we are going to change fetching to false. And we are going to add the error in there from the action payload. And then lastly, receive users. We're going to pull in the state. The fetching is false. Fetched is true. And users is action payload. And at this point, it probably makes sense to actually break that into multiple lines just to keep things clean. There we go. So now everything should work and our logger should show us a beautiful amount of stuff. So at first you're fetching false, fetched false, no users, same is true. And then that's when it starts, but then you can see that it changes it to fetching true, fetched false, no users. And then we received our users. So now we have fetching false, fetched is true. And we have our two users in here, which are came from that API and we have an object of Will, and we have an object of my wife, Laura. So let's go ahead and make this error. There we go, whoops, had a typo in that URL there. You can see now it fired fetch users start, there's the Axios error, and then the fetch users error went off and fired. So now our next state is error, fetched, fetching, and still no users. So that's the way you do it with thunks, with by dispatching a single function that receives a dispatch first argument. You can only ever give it one argument. That's what a thunk is. You can look up more on thunks. That's a little outside the scope of this video. And then if you do a lot of promises, which this returns a promise, you can clean that up a little bit more by doing Redux promise middleware. So let's import promise. There we go. Promise is pulled in and then we can actually do promise instead of thunk or promise in addition to thunk. There you go, promise also has to be run as a function. And with that, you dispatch it a little differently. You'd still dispatch a standard flux object. Uh, so you dispatch that and you give it a type, which type doesn't really matter because we're, we're not doing anything yet. So I'll just say type of foo. And then you actually return your promise. So here's my promise as the payload. And so that middleware 
that promise middleware, where was that? Right there. Promise middleware will notice that you dispatched a payload that is a promise type and it'll automatically send through some default messages, some de default dispatches for you. So let me go ahead and make this work again. There we go. So that's going to work. Let me clean this code up here. And so you'll notice that automatically it sends off a foo pending. And so foo is going to be the type. So I guess I do want a fetch users. So automatically it fires fetch users pending, and then it's going to fire fetch users fulfilled whenever that's finished. And then should there be an error, it will do rejected. Fetch users pending, fetch users rejected. So it is cleaner if you do a lot of promises. If all your async is promises, you're not really using ES6 generators, uh, then that's really clean. You can see that cleans it up just fine. And then you just up here, you go fetch users pending. Fetch users rejected. And then fetch users, what was that, fulfilled? There's probably two L's in fulfilled. No, nope, there's just one L fulfilled. Ah, I was homeschooled. Let's make that error again. And you can see that rejected picks up. Excellent, so there you go. That is how you handle asynchronous actions with Redux. You just change the way you dispatch them. So that's about all you need to know. In the next videos, we can actually tie this into our React application and make the React application simply reflect the state of the store.